You know, I started my first business when I was 12. I was buying and selling um, baseball cards, buying and selling stamps, anything I could do to make money, I, I was hustling and trying to do. So I would, excuse me, go out and buy a bunch of baseball cards that I collected and I would package, I would say, okay, you're guaranteed to have a Pittsburgh Pirate in this package. And I would charge three times as much. And I'd set up on this park bench down in the park down in Scott Township where I grew up. And um, I'd have these little sales. And it was great, I made money and I, I mean, it was, you know, and I, I learned as much about business when I was nine, 10 and 12 as I, I learned any other time. Um, if you're gonna have and run a business, if you don't understand accounting, you're already behind the eight ball. Can't you hire a guy that's, that knows how to But then they, they still have to communicate to you, right? I mean, there's people that don't understand the, the concept of, you know, the difference between profits and cash. You know, oh, your accountant might tell you, you're profitable, but your cash is going down. You know, not understanding um, the breakdown. And, and when you don't... Do you think you need college to learn that? Yeah, I think you do, right? Because it, it may not, for some people, look, if you're so self-motivated that you can take an online course in accounting and teach yourself everything, you're way ahead of the game anyways. But most people aren't. And I'm not saying you have to go to Indiana. I'm not saying go to an expensive school. I don't care if you go to a community college and take accounting and, and spend 99 bucks for the class. Just, you know, spending the money forces you to be more obligated to do it. But accounting, finance, lesser extent marketing, sales if the school offers that, these are all the, that's the language of business. And so while it's possible to teach yourself these things and while it's possible to hire them, mm -hmm. when you're starting your own company, you don't want to have to spend money hiring an accountant, right? You're already probably going to have to hire a lawyer to set up uh, your, your, well, let me take that. If you've gone through all these classes, you probably don't have to hire a lawyer to incorporate, right? Got you can probably figure it out yourself. And so your cost of opening up a business drops, but even more important than all that, that's, that's the blocking and tackling. That's the language of business. You know, the thing I learned at Indiana that was more important than anything else, I learned how to learn. And learning became far more important to me because the one certainty in business is that it's always going to be changing. The, if, if you're not always learning if, to this minute, if, if I'm not continuously learning, if I'm not just absorbing as much as I can absorb, someone else is gonna kick my ass, right? So you talk about paranoia. The, the greatest source of your paranoia should be knowledge. If someone else knows more than you do, and if you're not learning, if you don't know, the, if you don't know how to learn, if you don't have a thirst for learning and acquiring information, you're, you're SOL. What would you say is the number one reason why people fail? Not necessarily why they make it, the complete opposite. Right, lack of brains, lack of effort. Lack of brains, lack of effort. Yeah, they just, they don't do the work. They don't learn, you know. When you walk in the room, when you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition, you know, unless you're just extremely lucky. And if there's going to be competition, that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started. And if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers, you're going to lose. And, but most people don't consider that. They don't do the work. They don't learn more about their industry. They don't know even about their business. I mean, and so you've got to put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else. Um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. Because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing. Otherwise I'm gonna kick your ass, you know, and you're not gonna outwork me. And so, you know, the combination is usually what kills businesses early on more than anything. People like to say, you know, the only stupid questions are the one you don't, ones you don't ask, and that's not right, right? Because the questions you ask tell every, tell me, tell whoever more about you than anything else you do. Because in particular, it tells me about your preparation. If you ask me questions about just basic things that you should have known and you should have down to a science, that's going to disqualify you almost more than anything. You know, and there's certain guys that have the genetics to jump out of the gym, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's certain guys, you know, that, you know, when they golf, they have the muscle memory and, and the discipline. You know, Dirk um, Nowitzki may not be the most talented guy in the NBA, but his discipline and his focus to do what's necessary to be successful, he's willing to do and combine it with being seven feet tall and being skilled, you know, it makes him an amazing basketball player. So it's, it's understanding what your skill set is, finding the right place to use those skills, and then going for it. You know, will that make you 250 grand? It depends if you pick the right industry. But whatever industry you pick, if you outwork everybody, if you try to be a little smarter than everybody, if you try to be a better salesperson than everybody, if you try to be better prepared than everybody, you've got your best chance. Because if you don't do it and somebody else does, you know, I have the saying, work like someone's trying to take it all away from you. You know, work, mm -hmm. I actually work mm -hmm. like someone's spending 24 hours 
working 24 hours to take it all away from you. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way I look at it. I always say, you know, for every one of my businesses, I, I said, what would I do to kick my own ass? You right? So whatever business you have, there's somebody trying to put you out of business. There's somebody trying to, to take a bite out of mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. And it's better for you to figure out how they're going to do it rather than they do it. Um, and so, yeah, that's being paranoid. And so you have to be paranoid. You have to anticipate other people's next move and moves. And you can't ever you know, downplay the competition. And you've, you've got to be brutally honest with yourself and say, you know, what's my competition? And I'm, I'm a big believer. You've got to work like there's somebody trying to take it all away from you because there is. It's so much easier, faster, cheaper to start a company these days that someone is going to bust your, your ass if you're not working hard enough. You know, I was telling, um, I was at a business plan competition this morning for, at a college and they were kind of being dismissive of the competition and so you can't ever do that. You know, they're out there trying to take you down and they're not just going to sit still. And if you're good, really, really good, you're going to inspire them to work even harder, faster, better. And so you have to be, you know, very self-aware of what you're good at and what other people are good at. You know, when I bought the Mavs, we, we had no season ticket holder base. And so literally it was a, a matter of just putting a list of former season ticket holders and a white pages back then, you know, on my desk next to my phone and making phone calls. You. Yeah, me. Yeah, because if I'm not going to do it, so how can I expect someone else to, to do me. it, right? So just get on the phone. Hey, this is Mark Cuban. I'm the new owner of the Dallas <laughs> Mavericks. You know, I'd like to invite you back for a game. It's not, though. This is my business. But you, 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 you can't get regular sales guys or something to make those calls once they get to a quarter. You, you're a guy yeah. that's a billionaire. You're making those well, calls. But that's, all, you know, and that's fine and good, right? Because everybody's got their own goals, right? And But still, I, I don't want anybody at the Mavs to be able to say, well, he's not willing to do the work, right? There's... You know, if I walk around, I'm picking up all the papers. I'm not saying go get that picked up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that's trash. I'm picking it up. Um, so, but in terms of speed of growth, it, it's really, you got to get that first customer first. And then when you get that first, what did you learn? Reiterate, get that next customer. And then hopefully as you learn more and more through the process, then the next one, the next one, the next one becomes, comes by even faster. If you're going to be great at something, you've got to make the effort to be great at something. Um, whether it's sports, whether it's physics, math, science, business, whatever it may be, you know, it's not just a natural skill. You, you know, I just, like we talked about learning, that's a grind, but I love it, you know, and I just, I think I've just learned what I'm good at and learned to focus on those things and, and try to, you know, utilize those, those skills.